Good afternoon. This is Rich Nass, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media and leader of the Embedded and IoT franchises for Embedded Computing Design. Here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With, where we speak to some really important person in the embedded space. And this week, my really important person is Lewis Parks, who is the President and CEO of Secure RF. Good afternoon, Lewis. Good afternoon, Rich. You have to uphold that title, a very important person, okay? I am very excited because I'm going to get my wife to listen to this after. <laughs> very good. So we'll have an audience of at least one. Very good. Um, okay, so we get five minutes, so let's see if we can jump right into this. Um, you guys provide security for the IoT. Uh, that says a lot, but on the other hand, it says not that much. Um, I could look through the phone book and find dozens of people who say the same thing. Um, what do you guys do that's different from what everybody else is? And I wonder how many people are, understand my reference to the phone book. But go ahead. What's different about what you guys do? Now, we, we love being part of the IoT with virtually everything else in the world out there. Um, Security is an interesting place, so I guess two things I want to distinguish quickly. We specifically address authentication and the use of a technology called asymmetric or public, public key technology. Um, and very specifically, we look to authenticate or secure the smallest of IoT devices. When I say that, we define it based on processor size usually, meaning an 8-bit or 16-bit processor. And I think if you go to the phone book under 8 and 16-bit, you will find virtually no <laughs> listings. That's what we do that's unique. Okay, so are, are you adding a processor, or are you using that 8 or 16-bit processor, which doesn't have a lot of processing power built in? So that's great. So we're using that processor. So in fact, one of the other unique value adds where you can apply security to some small devices by introducing a coprocessor or an accelerator, other hardware elements. Because our math is performed with 8-bit operands, we'll actually fit on that 8-bit processor as is, we'll even run in software. We don't even have to be in silicon. So give me an example. I mean, there aren't even that many 8-bits out there anymore. Uh, I, I mean, well, let me say that the right way. They're shipping billions of 8-bit processors, but the number of new ones that are being announced is not a big number. So are you working with Microchip, Freescale, NXP, those guys? We're working with those guys. And, you know, the reality is I think that um, the numbers for 8-bit and, and arguably 16-bit, but 8-bit equals the number of processors for 32-bit, uh, around 6, 7 billion. And again, you could probably tell me better. But given the value of 8-bit, that means that there's still three times as many 8-bit processors being shipped as 32-bit. So there's plenty of platforms out there to be secured. And in fact, we've, we're finding them in a lot, a lot of consumer and IoT places now and growing. So whether they're building net new ones, and Microchip might tell you that they are, um, you know, we, we see it as a, a very strong area. So I understand this correctly. Is your customer the guy who's building the end IoT device, or is your customer the guy who's building the APIT processor? Well, so that's... Arguably, they're both because the guy building the end IoT device can't do it without the processor being built by uh, the microchips and XPs of the world. Um, our focus as of late has been to partner with the builders of the processor because it gives us a much greater presence and leverage in the space. But I will tell you we're working, you know, from a legacy basis. And, and actually, I shouldn't say that, from a couple of new project basis with the people who are actually building the end solution that, you know, you, the consumer, or the industrial consumer are going to touch. So what's an example of an end application? Um, an example of an end application. Um, so we're – I'm quickly through my head racking out the NDAs <laughs> to name something. <laughs> Uh, well, just in general, so we don't have to be specific. So we're working uh, with a, um, a, a government, uh, overseas government, who is looking to protect and identify uh, all government and uh, government military and authorized vehicles, a significant number, via an, an authentication mechanism. 
uh, from up to 100 feet away. So that's a Bluetooth device not connected to a network or internet, which needs to be directly correlated and authenticated in uh, milliseconds of time. So that's an example of a, a low processor. Energy is an issue with IoT, so we are significantly lower energy consumption than other security platforms. Um, so we're doing things in BLE. Um, we're also uh, doing something in automotive where cars, of course, are connected to the Internet and they're big, big physical things, but there's a lot of 8 and 16-bit processors on them. And in fact, in one case, it's a performance issue where incoming data, and if you think uh, of the autonomous, autonomous world coming, needs to be authenticated in a very, very fast and everything needs to be authenticated instance. Um, there's a pilot there that we're addressing. So let me put you on the spot here. Um, if we're talking about a large volume application, how much do I have to pay you to provide security to authenticate my devices? Well, for you, Rich. <laughs> so we market, uh, we, have, we have two models. For, the, for our processor partners and what have you, we're really looking to provide the engines as part of their platforms and then people just pay for what they use or consume. So it's a uh, per unit, uh, you have a low volume, uh, you might be in, in the dimes and quarters, and, and as volume grows, like anything in the semiconductor world, you, you run down quickly into the pennies and potentially sub-penny. So, so, um, so we're talking really thousands is, of units, you're talking pennies. Uh, if you're talking millions of units, you're talking pennies. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, where, where did this come from? It sounds like it's a very math-intensive uh, application you're doing here. Where, where does our application come from? Yeah. yeah where, um, did, well, where, where did your technology originate? So our technology originates with my uh, three co-founders, um, who are mathematician cryptographers, uh, arguably top in the field, uh, you know, in, in what they do, uh, where they brought an area of mathematics called infinite group theory, or generically now referred to as group theoretic cryptography, which has been studied for over 40 years with books published, but brought this unique branch of mathematics into a Diffie-Hellman model, much like ECC, that simply gives you a really, really small footprint, uh, high performance. And we actually began working on this before the, the COIN IoT appeared. So we were targeting small 1 megahertz passive chip technologies 12 years ago, and we were very fortunate that while we were developing and perfecting our platforms and working with uh, all the standards and everybody, along comes this umbrella, the IoT, and we're here. Sounds like you got some pretty smart people there. We do, we do. It's, uh, <laughs> I often used to joke I'm, I'm the human that would interface and translate between them and our potential end users. <laughs> very good. Uh, I'd love to talk to you longer, Lewis, but uh, we've used up our five minutes, so we're going to have to stop here. Um, where do people find more information on this technology? They can find us at securerf.com, um, and I think we're at securerf on uh, Twitter, um, and, uh, or in your yellow pages. There you go. Great. That was Lewis Parks, the president and CEO of SecureRF, Secure RF. And I am Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. Thanks, Lewis. Have a great day. Thank you, Rich. Greatly appreciate it.